There's a thing I've been wanting to show you for a little while, but believe it or not, it hasn't been rainy enough in the UK. That is until the last few days. So I think it's time to stop studying for once. Let's go out for a little walk. hoping I'm going to be able to show you what I want to show you because if not this whole video is going to be a bit of a damp squib. I've also got the slight problem that it's raining although it's eased off a little bit at the minute but it's also really windy so I have no idea if you're going to be able to hear me properly. But this is one of the things I can only really show you it working while it's raining and it will make more sense once we actually get to the thing that I want to show you. You see, up until not very long ago, five years ago, not even that, two or three years ago, everything around where I'm standing at the minute was open farmland and fields. And obviously needs must, and we need lots and lots more houses in the UK. And now, everywhere around here is houses. There's still plenty of fields past the houses. Houses, fields. And please don't turn this into an argument about whether or not houses can be built on fields. Because I guarantee your house was built on a field, unless you live in a river. And the problem is when you build houses on open farmland, is that when you get a lot of rain, and we'll get a lot of rain in the UK, all of the water that used to naturally seep down into the soil and mud, now ends up running off all of the hard surfaces and into the drains. And by the way, I'm fairly sure water shouldn't be flowing out of the phone line junction boxes. No wonder my internet's always going off. And spread over a big housing estate like this, that water runoff can cause a really big problem. Because ultimately, if you remember the Usbane River that I told you about, oh, a little few months ago now, most of it around here flows into the Usburn and 10 12 years ago we had a flooding event that was really really bad not necessarily caused by new build houses we did just have a lot of rain but the Usburn broke its banks in many many places and there was extensive flooding across this whole area and I think it was around that time that the Environment Agency basically said that if you're going to be building lots of new houses you're going to have to deal with flood prevention and flood management as part of that. So we've had uh, pretty much three or four days of really heavy rain and the Usburn here, this is normally about two foot lower than this. I mean we're nowhere near breaking the banks or anything like that but you can see it's fast flowing, it's quite dirty from all the water that's been picked up upstream but it's coping with the rain because of a number of features that have been implemented in this particular estate. Now, the thing that I want to show you is just up here. And if it's not doing the thing that I'm hoping it's doing, <laughs> then this whole effort has been a complete waste of time. Hopefully, just around here. Welcome to a sustainable urban drainage system in action. Take a bit of a wander up here so you can get a bit closer. That's absolutely awesome. That is working exactly as it should be working. I've never really seen these full of water before because we don't, believe it or not, get that much rain in the northeast. Don't get me wrong, it gets pretty chilly here sometimes, but it is actually one of the drier parts of the country. So these are what's known as balancing ponds and there's loads of these spread all around this particular housing estate. Normally they're not much to look at because they're normally pretty dry and empty and just look like kind of grassland sometimes. 
But then when you get a lot of rain like we have had over the last few days, this is what happens. And basically all of the natural rainwater runoff from the housing estate, instead of it going into the main sewers and into the main drains, it all runs off through little man-made tributaries and little rocky kind of outcrop things. And sometimes the water will just happily find its own path down to these ponds. And then I'll try and show you over on the other side where the balancing ponds drain into the Usbin, but in a much more controlled and gentle manner. So basically everything's held in these big balancing ponds like a giant tank. And these things are huge. And then the water just gradually seeps into the water course, which is literally just behind that grassy area there. I honestly don't know whether the reeds have been deliberately planted or not, but sometimes the reeds will be put in just to kind of discourage too much bird life. There's an airport just over there. There's probably other highly scientific reasons for the reeds going in as well, but I have heard about reeds going in near airports. So here's another pond here. Now this pond's pretty much completely full. Underneath here is like the rocky drainage system that this would normally drain into the Usburn over here. This is a little tributary coming from this little Suds flood prevention system that they've got around here. So we've got like reed beds here, more reed beds all the way up there and this kind of controls water flow through this little burn into that little river there. But you can see this pond's actually so full now that it's just going straight over the top of it. And uh, the Uspin down this area, it has broken its banks. If I pop over to that bridge over there, you'll see it better. Check it out, it is getting high here. I would say this is two or three foot higher than normal. But we have had a huge amount of rain over the last few days. I guarantee there would have been flooding further downstream if it wasn't for the balancing ponds here. In fact, do you remember that urban observatory thing I was talking about a little while ago? Link in the description. This will be interesting, let's have a quick look at this. This tells us all about the river level, exactly where I'm standing. Check it out, look. These are the balancing ponds on this map. Let's click on this little sensor. This is really impressive what the university have done here, this urban observatory thing. You should go and check it out. I'll put it on the last month and we'll look at the river depth. Yeah, so I guess we had quite a lot of rain over the last couple of days. So I don't know how well this is calibrated, but it's basically saying that the river is normally about 10 centimetres deep, which it could be depending on where the sensor is. But you can see that never really fluctuates all, all that much. Until we get to today, check it out. So this jump in the river level, it's literally only happened over the last 24 hours. That's amazing. Brilliant. But you can see it's going back down. The rain's easing off now. So cool. Good work, Urban Observatory. Check this out. This is one of the main actual outfalls. All this water here, this is just surface water runoff from the housing estate further upstream. That's a lot of water. And that's all going into the balancing ponds. Try and get down here without breaking my neck. I haven't got wellies on. What I do for YouTube. Check it out. That's just surface water. The nice thing as well is that these are an absolute haven for wildlife. You can hear all the different birds and all sorts of things that live in this environment now and it's, it's really, really nice. But there you go, I thought you might find that interesting. This is how uh, a Suds sustainable urban drainage system works and is working.